You're driving along when suddenly, a bright amber light illuminates your dashboard, the ABS warning light. It's a moment that can instantly fill you with dread. What does it mean? Is your car unsafe to drive? Are you looking at a massive repair bill? Before you panic, take a deep breath. That light is a signal from your car's anti-lock braking system, a key safety feature that helps you maintain steering control during hard braking. While it should never be ignored, it doesn't always spell disaster. In this comprehensive guide, we're going to demystify that warning light. We'll walk you through the five most common culprits, from simple issues you can check in your driveway to more complex problems, like faulty wheel speed sensors. We'll give you the knowledge and step-by-step -step instructions to diagnose the problem yourself, potentially saving you a costly trip to the mechanic. Welcome to Car Fix School. Here, we teach simple DIY car tips that save money and prevent costly repairs. Let's get started. First on our list, and by far the most frequent culprit, is low brake fluid. Your entire braking system, including the ABS, is hydraulic. It relies on the pressure of this fluid to function. When the level drops, a sensor alerts the car's computer, triggering the ABS light. It's the system's way of saying it lacks the pressure needed to work correctly in an emergency. Let's pop the hood. The brake fluid reservoir is a small, semi-transparent plastic container, usually mounted against the firewall on the driver's side. You'll see min and max lines on the side. The fluid should be between them. If it's low, you need to top it up, but using the correct fluid is critical. Check the reservoir cap or your owner's manual for the required type, like DOT3 or DOT4. Using the wrong fluid can damage seals and lead to brake failure. When adding fluid, pour slowly and don't overfill past the max line, as the fluid expands when hot. Most importantly, remember that brake fluid exists in a sealed system. If it's low, the fluid has gone somewhere. This usually points to either worn brake pads, which we'll discuss later, or a potential leak in your brake lines, which requires immediate professional attention. Next up are the wheel speed sensors. Think of these as the eyes of your ABS. Each wheel has a sensor that constantly monitors its rotational speed and sends this information to the ABS control module. During hard braking, if the module detects one wheel is slowing down much faster than the others, meaning it's about to lock up, it rapidly pulses the brake on that specific wheel to help it regain traction. If even one of these sensors fails, gets too dirty, or has a loose connection, the ABS module loses its vision for that wheel. It can't make accurate decisions, so it shuts the system down and turns on the warning light as a precaution. To inspect them, you'll need to safely jack up the car and secure it with jack stands, then remove the wheel. The sensor is typically a small magnetic pickup mounted on the steering knuckle or hub assembly, pointing at a toothed reluctor ring on the axle or hub. Visually inspect the sensor and its wiring for any obvious damage, like cracks, fraying, or corrosion. Often, they're just covered in road grime and metallic brake dust, which can interfere with the magnetic signal. Gently clean the sensor tip with a soft cloth and some brake cleaner. Also, check its electrical connector. Unplug it, look for any corrosion on the pins, and plug it back in firmly until you hear a click. This simple cleaning and reseating can often solve the problem. Sometimes the problem is purely electrical, and the simplest fix is a blown fuse. The ABS is a powerful system with a dedicated control module and a hydraulic pump, all of which are protected from electrical surges by one or more fuses. If a fuse blows, power is cut to the system, and the warning light comes on instantly. Your first step is to locate the fuse box, or boxes. Most cars have two, one in the engine bay and another inside the cabin often under the dashboard or behind the glove compartment. Your owner's manual is your best friend here. It will have a diagram showing which fuse corresponds to the ABS. Once you've found it, pull the fuse out using the small plastic puller tool often found in the fuse box itself. Hold it up to the light. You should see a small metal strip inside. If that strip is broken or looks burnt, the fuse is blown. For a more certain test, you can use a multimeter set to continuity mode. If it beeps, the fuse is good. If it's silent, it's dead. When replacing it, you must use a new fuse with the exact same amperage rating. This is non-negotiable. Using a higher rated fuse can lead to catastrophic failure of the expensive ABS module. If the new fuse blows right away, it signals a deeper electrical short that needs a professional diagnosis. This next cause connects directly back to our first point about brake fluid. Your ABS light could actually be an early warning that your brake pads are worn out. Here's how it works. As your brake pads wear down, 
the caliper pistons must extend further out to press the pads against the rotors. This extra travel for the pistons draws more brake fluid from the reservoir down into the calipers to fill the space. Over time, this causes the fluid level in the reservoir to drop significantly. Eventually, it drops below the minimum mark, tripping the fluid level sensor and activating your ABS and brake warning lights. So, while the immediate trigger is low fluid, the root cause is worn pads. You can often inspect your pads without even removing the caliper. Look through the inspection window on the caliper to see how much pad material is left. As a rule of thumb, if there's less than 3 millimeters or about the thickness of 2 dimes, it's time for a replacement. Other signs include a high-pitched squealing sound when you brake, a grinding noise, or a pulsating feeling in the pedal. Replacing your pads not only resolves the warning light, but more importantly, restores your vehicle's primary stopping power, which is a critical safety maintenance task. Finally, we arrive at the least common, but most serious and expensive cause, a failure of the ABS control module itself. This module is the central computer, the brain of the entire anti-lock braking system. It takes all the data from the wheel speed sensors, analyzes it in milliseconds, and commands the hydraulic unit to modulate brake pressure. These modules are complex electronic units and can fail due to internal issues like cracked solder joints from years of vibration and heat cycles, or the failure of the integrated hydraulic pump motor. Because this is the most costly component, it should be your absolute last consideration after you've thoroughly checked the fluid, all four wheel speed sensors, and the fuses. Diagnosing a faulty module requires a professional grade OBD2 scanner that can communicate directly with the ABS system to read specific fault codes. If the module is indeed the problem, you have a few options. Replacing it with a brand new unit from the dealer is the most expensive. A more budget-friendly route is sourcing a used module from a reputable salvage yard or, a very popular option, sending your original module to a specialized service to be professionally repaired and rebuilt. This is not a DIY job, as it requires specialized tools and a complex brake bleeding procedure afterward. And there you have it. By methodically checking your brake fluid, wheel speed sensors, fuses, wiring, and reluctor rings, you're now equipped to diagnose that pesky ABS light. This systematic approach demystifies the problem and empowers you to take control of your vehicle's maintenance, potentially saving you a costly trip to the garage. Remember, your anti-lock braking system is a critical safety feature. If you've gone through these steps and the light remains on, or if you feel unsure about any part of the process, it's always best to consult a certified professional your safety is the number one priority. To make it easier, we've created a free downloadable checklist. The link is in the description. If this video helped, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more practical car care guides. Share your own ABS stories in the comments below. Your experience could help another driver out.